Okay. <clears throat> Interestingly, with the social unrest going on, some scriptures come to mind. So I'd like to share it for anyone who's willing to listen. I'm going to start in Acts 6 and just do a couple uh, scriptures here. Now, in these days when the number of disciples was multiplying, there arose a murmuring of the Grecian Jews against the Hebrews. So you got Greeks versus Hebrews, so a little bit of racial uh, tension there. And this was because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. And the twelve, the apostles, called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not fit that we should forsake the word of God and serve tables. Well, this is an interesting thing to think about in terms of the twelve apostles are saying, hey, the primary focus is on learning God's word, studying his word, being obedient to his word. And so this distraction, rather than pull them out of God's word, they said, well, let's do something else. And so what they said is, Look ye out, therefore, brethren, from among you seven men full of good report, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom, it, whom we may appoint over this business. Okay? So the solution is men of good report, full of the Holy Spirit. So believers, full of the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you're not a believer, then your motivation is not for fairness. Your motivation is probably more for what can I get out of it? If you have a relationship with the Lord, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, then you're then you realize that hey, we we got to have some fairness here. So they said, find spirit-filled people to solve this problem knowing that somebody with a relationship with the God with God and was spirit-filled would make sure that things were done as equitably as possible but we will continue steadfastly in prayer and in ministry of the word so in other words they were going to keep um, promoting the gospel and praying for people to come into the kingdom and that is important in a social unrest we need to be witnessing we need to be growing the kingdom we need to be letting people know of the Lord Jesus and now I want to go to Acts 19 funny how this happened 2,000 years ago and things just tend to repeat and I want to go to verse 19. This is interesting. Um, I'm going to start at 21. Okay, 23. There we go. And about that time there arose no small stir concerning the way for a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no little business unto the craftsmen. So what we've got here is we've got people who are making money off of making idols. And that was their business. That was their livelihood. And there's a lot of livelihoods in this day that are people's livelihoods that they're not willing to give up. And they may not be godly, just like having an idol is not godly. Um, ending ending people's lives in the, in the name of convenience is not godly either. Okay? Don't want to go there, but you almost have to. Okay, whom he gathered together. Whoops. Uh, 
whom he gathered together with workmen of like occupation. So he got all his people that were doing the same thing, and they said, hey, we got to stick together. And said, sirs, ye know that by this business we have our wealth. So we have our livelihood. We've made a nice life for ourselves doing things based on these shrines. And ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost all throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they are no gods that are made with hands. So what they're saying is when you follow the Christian, if it hurts my business, we're going to be in opposition. And you see that. You see that. People actually deny science in order to promote abortion. I mean, there's just no other way to say that. Now, those same people tell you you got to believe the science of global warming, but they deny the science of human life in order to say, oh, it's okay to have abortions because there's money in it, because it's an industry. People have their livelihood based on it. Okay. But Paul had turned these people away, so this was hurting their business. And not only is there danger that this, that this our trade, come into disrepute, so they were worried about, hey, this business they were doing and everybody was okay with is suddenly not acceptable. But also that the temple of the great goddess Diana be made of no account and that she should even be deposed from her magnificence whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. So this was a time and a place where these people were very into this, this worship and these people were making money off of it and they didn't want anything to come along and say, hey, you got to stop it. When we promote the gospel today, we're often called haters because what it is is we're hurting their business we're hurting what they're used to and we got to overcome that and we've got to promote God's ways God's ways is being right we've got to be we've got to encourage people to set him apart we've got to put our focus on him and when they heard this, they were filled with wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Now, interestingly, that's what uh, you they were saying. And the city was filled with confusion, and they rushed with one accord into the theater, having seized Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel. And when Paul was minded to enter unto the people, now notice there was a theater full of a mobbing riot and Paul was ready to enter to try and witness to the Lord. The disciples suffered him not and certain also of the Asiarchs, being his friends, sent unto him and besought him not to adventure himself into the theater. So in other words, this was a mob. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and the more part knew not, wherefore they were come together. So you have people who are doing a congregation and now you've got your onlookers. Sounds very familiar. And they brought Alexander out of the multitude and the Jews put him forward and Alexander beckoned with his hand and would have made a defense unto the people. But when they perceived that he was a Jew, all with one voice, about the space of two hours, cried, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Now, from a practical standpoint, if you try and talk to somebody about abortion and that it's wrong, you generally get two hours worth of crying out, it's a woman's right to choose, it's a woman's right to choose, it's a woman's right to choose. 
and you'll hear that. So similar thing happened then. And now the town clerk, and when the town clerk had quieted the multitude, he saith, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there who knoweth not that the city of the Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Diana and the image which fell down from Jupiter? Sounds like an asteroid. Seeing then that these things cannot be gainsaid, ye ought to be quiet and do nothing rash. For ye have brought hither these men who are neither robbers of temples nor blasphemers of our goddess. Notice that. Paul and his people were not taking anything from them. They were not blaspheming anything they believed. All they were doing was promoting the Lord God and Christ Jesus. And that is what needs to happen. We need to promote the Lord God and Christ Jesus and His ways. And His ways as the right ways. If therefore Demetrius and the craftsmen that are with him have a matter against any man, the courts are open, and there are proconsuls, let them accuse one another. So, what the clerk is saying is, if you have a chargeable offense, take them to court. If you don't have a chargeable offense, then you're rioting for nothing. Same thing today. If you want to draw very broadly that there is systemic racism in the country, there is no end to that. If you want to say this person is doing this because of that and you can prove it in a court of law, then all the way back to 1965, there have been protections. And lawsuits can be brought and people can be uh, prosecuted based on um, discrimination based on rec race, sex, religion, all that. So if you've got a specific case, bring a case to court. The courts are open. Well, with the pandemic, they're really not. But they should be, and they could be, and they are doing some stuff with Zoom. So the courts... If you've got a specific allegation, bring it. But if you just want to draw with a broad stroke and say this is happening and so this, so this is wrong and you just want to riot, then now you are in error. But if you seek anything about other matters, it shall be settled in the regular assembly. For indeed, we are in danger of being accused concerning this day's riot, there being no cause for it, and as touching it, we shall not be able to give account of this concourse. So if somebody came in and questioned why are they rioting, why are they, why are they shouting at these people, it would just be over a difference of opinion. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So you can't draw in broad strokes. The other place to go now is to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And I want to go to verse 18. This is very uh, relevant to today. The word which came to Jeremiah from Jehovah, saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he was making a work on the wheels. And when the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Now that is what the Lord does to us individually and to nations corporately. Then the word of Jehovah came to me, saying, O house of Israel, nation of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, saith Jehovah? 
Behold, as the clay in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. This nation, the nation of Israel then, this nation that, that we live in now, is in the hands of the Lord. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck up and to break down and to destroy it. So, we're in the Lord's hands as a nation, and he can break us down, and he can destroy us. If that nation concerning which I have spoken turn from their evil, I will repent of the evil that I thought to do unto them. Notice who has to turn first. So there's going to come a tipping point when the Lord will say, Enough, and he will act. And if we as a nation turn from our evils and repent, then he will repent. And at what instant shall I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build and to plant it? If they do that which is evil in my sight, that they obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good wherewith I said I would benefit them. So when a people form a nation, one nation under God, and we turn from following his ways, he might bless that nation initially, but eventually he won't if we don't obey his voice. How do we know his voice? We have to know his ways. We have to know his laws. We have to know his heart, which he has written very conveniently for us, or he has inspired it to be written out very conveniently for us. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Jehovah, Behold, I frame evil against you and devise a device against you. Return ye now every one from his evil way and amend your ways and your doings. So here is the warning. Hey, I'm about to do evil. Turn from your ways. But they say it is vain, for we will walk after our own devices and we will do every one after the stubbornness of his evil heart. In other words, they are rejecting the Lord. And a nation that rejects the Lord ultimately does not last long then really bad stuff happens therefore thus saith Jehovah ask ye now among the nations who hath heard such things the virgin of Israel hath done a very horrible thing shall the snow of Lebanon fail from the rock of the field or shall cold waters that flow down from afar be dried up and this is really sad because when a people set God apart and then he sets them apart and he blesses them time after time people get blessed enough they start thinking hey I can do this I'm in charge I can figure it out in verse 15 for my people have forgotten me they have burned incense to false gods and they have been made to stumble in their ways in the ancient paths to walk in by paths in a way not cast up to make their land an astonishment and a perpetual hissing everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished and shake his head I will scatter them as with an east wind that before the enemy I will show them the back and not the face in the day of their calamity. So Jeremiah said this to the people and how did they respond? They didn't want to hear what the Lord had to say from his messenger. 
Then they said, Come, let us devise devices against Jeremiah, for the law shall not perish from the priest, nor counsel from the wise, nor the word from the prophet. Come, let us smite him with the, with the tongue, and let us not give heed to any of his words. So, this was Israel. This was Judah. They had the temple. They had the priest system. They had the word in the priest. They had a... They went to church every week. But, the Lord said they had forgotten his ways. So they had the... They had the furniture. They had the... They had the things that looked like religion, but they weren't following the Lord's ways. That can happen when people get too comfortable. Sadly, a lot of churches, a lot of pastors will tell you there are things they don't preach on Sunday morning. I have heard it a couple of times. There's some things you just don't preach on Sunday morning. Who are they who are they trying to please? If God says speak it, we speak it. If God keeps you from speaking it, then don't speak it. But a comment like that sounds like, hey, I'm trying to please this congregation. And it also says that in the last days, congregations will get people to tickle their ears. So, what was um, told by Paul what happened in the last days sort of happened here. Here they had the, um, the things of religion, they had the things of God, but they weren't following God. And as a people get comfortable they often will drift away from God in which case they will get somebody who will tell them what they want to hear someone that will tell them it's all right everything's going to be okay everything's going to be okay the prophets other than Jeremiah in Jerusalem were saying that that there would be peace not war there would be peace not war and then the Babylonians came in and took them to exile and killed, and it was bad. They ate their own kids. That's how bad it got. And so this is the people who believe the Lord not listening to what the Lord says through Jeremiah. So they're rejecting him. They're saying, up, oh, he's a rabble rouser. He's a troublemaker. <sighs> Paul's advice preached the word. The word is his heart. His heart. And his heart is what's best for all of us. And yet, a lot of people don't know the heart of God because they don't know the laws of God. They hadn't thought about why he does such thing. And their relationship could be a lot closer. The Lord stands ready. He's longing for each and every one of us to draw closer every day. You never arrive. You never arrive until you're taken home and the Lord shows you His kingdom and you're in glory. Thank you. Father, Help your word to get out. Help your word to be heard. Not only heard, Lord, but help people to soften their ears so they might actually listen, so they might actually consider, 
so they might actually think hey this is a fallen world and this is a fallen world because people do what they want to do and they don't want to do what you have clearly said we should be doing people in churches Lord look for ways not to do what you say and justify it and they justify it because they don't want to submit Lord to you they want to do things your own way they are stiff necked and they call themselves Christians and that's something we should never do is call ourselves Christians we should have a relationship with the Lord such that people see that and call us Christians but we should never self identify as Christians we should let others identify us as Christians through the manner of our life so are you a Christian Greg Laurie once did a series about are you a believer Would, could you be convicted of it in a court of law based on your actions <sighs> Father I pray your kingdom come your ways Lord are the ways Lord you are set apart in my heart Lord eat this nation this nation's leader a former leader once said we're no longer yours Lord we're no longer set apart to you Lord we want to be like every we're, we're all inclusive and Lord you are all inclusive in that you want a relationship with each and every one of us Lord but you are set apart there's one path to relationship with you there's one path to knowing you and your ways there's one path that leads us to a place where we are all where we all can live in harmony in unity in what everybody's calling for and I mean all people the unborn the born and people of all colors races and Lord as I, I just pray people will delve into your word Lord and apply it to their lives that others might call them Christians and it be true help us Lord help us draw closer to you the world's fallen if it all falls apart tomorrow it's a fallen world we should expect it and it is only through concentrating on you as those disciples do concentrating on our prayer conversation with you and your word Lord your truth it's only concentrating on those two things Lord and that's what's important help us all to realize that help us all to do that in Jesus name Amen.